All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming for my talk. Um, the topic for my presentation today is homomorphic encryption in the open source world. So all of us uh, have a mobile phone, a laptop, and internet access, and lots and lots of data is being collected, and I don't know what it's being used for. So that's like a valid concern that most of us have, but wouldn't it help to know that all of this data could be anonymized and made sure that none of your private information is getting leaked. Uh, at the same time, you get good inferences, predictions, and still a good recommendation system. Well, who wouldn't like that? And that's why I'm here to talk more about homomorphic encryption. So before we deep dive into uh, the technicalities, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Akanksha Duggal. Uh, I'm a senior data scientist in the Emerging Technologies team uh, in the office of the CTO at Red Hat. Uh, I'm based in Boston. Uh, and there's my GitHub, LinkedIn, Twitter, whichever one uh, you want to ping me and like want to have a chat and discuss further about this topic. Uh, happy to do that. So um, let's get back to homomorphic encryption. So starting with what is encryption, like most of us already know, but still it's a way of scrambling data uh, so that the only authorized parties get access to the exact information. More like it's a process of converting the human readable text into an incomprehensible version that only certain parties understand. And it's also known as ciphertext. And homomorphic encryption is a kind of encryption that allows you to make computations on this encrypted data. It ensures that performing operations on encrypted data is as smooth and simple as performing it on any normal data set. So as companies continue to develop machine learning models for different tasks, these models can be a private asset and something that you cannot share with public for several reasons. And on the other end, the user who also has some private information does not want the model or that company to know their data. Homomorphic encryption is something that lets you uh, encrypt this data in a way that only the client side would know what the data looks like. And thus, this encrypted data is sent to the model. And the result of those models only comes back in an encrypted form to the client itself, who are the only authorized party to decrypt it and get the final result out of it. So, Homomorphic encryption also has numerous applications that range from uh, healthcare to smart electric grids, from education to machine learning as a service, and all sectors where input privacy is paramount. And making the use of data is usually already very, very complex due to regulations or the significance of the data or related security concerns. So one of the most important use cases of homomorphic encryption, in my opinion, is going to be the healthcare industry where precision medicine requires intensive computation about privacy and agency against breaches. So the agencies and the hospitals uh, must ensure compliance with relevant laws such as HIPAA. And the pharmaceutical companies are also concerned about protecting their IP here. And the trade-offs uh, and the regulations come with disastrous outcomes for both the organizations and their patients. So homomorphic encryption is one such solution to some of these trade-offs, and it comes at a minimal cost as compared to the outcomes of uh, violating these regulations. Um, coming back to the topic of this presentation, which is homomorphic encryption in the open source world. So where does this come in picture and how can it be used in the open source world uh, and help the communities become a better place? Uh, so starting with the benefits, both homomorphic encryption and open source promote transparency, ensuring verification of algorithms and implementations and thus want to enhance their security at each point. So it also encourages a collaborative environment for researchers, developers, and contributors while ensuring the privacy of their data. So some of the use cases, starting with protecting sensitive information, 
Open source communities oftentimes have sensitive information such as user data, passwords, or financial transactions. Homomorphic encryption can be used to encrypt this data, protecting it from unauthorized access, while still allowing authorized parties to perform computations on the data. Secure collaboration. Uh, open source projects oftentimes have collaborations between multiple parties, oftentimes competitors, including developers, contributors, and users. Homomorphic encryption can allow them to securely share their data and code between these parties without revealing any sort of sensitive information while they all continue to work together on the same project. Protecting the intellectual property, uh, most projects rely on open collaboration, but it's important to protect the intellectual property, such as code and algorithms that could be private to a particular user or contributor. Homomorphic encryption allows you to protect the property by encrypting these codes and algorithms while still allowing authorized parties to execute the computations using your own code. Also, data privacy, there's lots and lots of data being collected on a daily basis for it be any open source projects or simple websites that you're often not even aware of that are collecting your data. Homomorphic encryption uh, definitely allows you to encrypt this data and ensure user privacy at all points and also allows data scientists like myself to make inferences from the data without actually knowing what the data is or like not knowing any personal information about the person whose data is. Also, uh, facilitating secure voting. So uh, if you've been a part of open source community, you know oftentimes there's a voting procedure. And sometimes under pressure, most people are not able to like cast their vote freely. So Homomorphic encryption would also allow you to ensure that your votes are private uh, while you get to give your opinion on any decisions or anything that is related to your open source project. Well, uh, every coin has two sides. So homomorphic encryption thus has a lot of advantages, but also comes with certain disadvantages at the same time. Even though uh, homomorphic encryption is great, it can perform inferences on encrypted data, the model and the data never see each other, and uh, it does not require any sort of interactivity between the client uh, and the business at any point, and it also allows you to outsource your data storage and processing. However, it comes at a very expensive cost in terms of computation, and uh, most computational workloads are not designed in homomorphic encryption-friendly way, and it restricts to certain kind of calculations at some point, uh, so division and comparison of two values, which is sort of crucial, and uh, also data filtering for data scientists is not possible uh, because you cannot compare two values and you cannot subtract. Uh, in some uh, open source projects, you cannot even subtract values or divide values. So that comes at a very big limitation, especially for the data scientists working on this. So. Uh, in the part of our team at Red Hat, we did a research uh, on getting a better understanding of what homomorphic encryption is and how we can use it in our projects. So we started from the start. We looked up when was the first time somebody talked about homomorphic encryption, which was in 80s and 90s when uh, the Paleo crypto system was developed and the most famous RSA crypto system was developed. So starting with uh, the partial homomorphic encryption, uh, this type of scheme was the first of its kind and was uh, developed uh, to evaluate any circuit that composed of any single type of gate, either addition or multiplication, but never both on the same time. And uh, it didn't restrict any size or depth, but it was suitable to only perform addition and multiplication on the encrypted data. RSA crypto system is the biggest example here, and also the Paleo crypto system is uh, another example for partial homomorphic encryption. Then a few years later, with more research comes somewhat itchy. Uh, it supports two types of gates. Uh, it could be composed of both addition and multiplication, uh, but with a restriction on the depth of the calculation that you can perform here. Uh, SHE is useful for, uh, useful for performing uh, low degree polynomials. And uh, however, uh, sometimes we need to evaluate circuits with an arbitrary depth. So, 
SHE wouldn't be the best bet here, and uh, BFE scheme uh, is also a type of SHE. I will talk a little bit about the scheme later, uh, but won't go into too much technical depth here because uh, these involve a lot of calculations, mathematics, and uh, uh, probably that would be some other talk. Uh, then comes the fully homomorphic encryption. Uh, this encryption scheme evaluates circuits that are composed of both addition and multiplication gates. And in contrast to the somewhat uh, HE, if HE has unlimited circuit depths and which makes it suitable even for deep learning applications, and all fully homomorphic encryption schemes use a specific type of post-quantum cryptography called the lattice cryptography. And most of these libraries require deep expertise uh, of the underlying cryptographic scheme to use them correctly and efficiently at the same time. Uh, so CKKS and BGV schemes come under the category of fully homomorphic encryption. Uh, so CKKS, or the fully homomorphic encryption scheme, uh, uses an approximate arithmetic uh, way of calculation as compared to the BFE scheme in somewhat HE, which uses the exact computation here. So to give you an example, what somewhat HE does here is, so example, you have two numbers, two and three, and you encrypted both these numbers. So how BFE is going to calculate it is like, it's going to just add two and three and make it a five. However, when you're doing fully homomorphic encryption, it allows you to do arithmetic calculations. So you can do a decimal and an approximate calculation as well. So what it usually does, it, it makes your 2 and 3 as 1.99 and 3.01, and then perform an addition on that. So sometimes you get an error of, say, 0.1%, but usually it's more correct way of doing things. And when it comes to machine learning and deep learning calculations, uh, CKKS and the BGV scheme are more suitable to perform any sort of complex tasks because they don't use the exact, exact uh, addition or multiplication for doing the calculations. So uh, we also performed a comparative study of uh, various open source tools that already exist in the world and uh, tried them out to get a better understanding of where should we start working on this. So. First thing first, like uh, just when you Google uh, FHE or homomorphic encryption, you know there's just one leader in the market. It's Microsoft Seal. It's by far the best library available to use. Uh, but the only limitation here for me as a data scientist would be that it's written in C++. And for most of our applications and our development works, we use Python workloads. And uh, Python is more suited for doing any sort of machine learning calculations. So that brought us into a situation where we wanted to look for more libraries that are better suited in Python and can be used directly. Uh, so we tried to look for some wrapper functions or libraries that do use Microsoft Seal in the background, but still uh, can be used in Python and can be just like imported directly into our notebooks. Uh, so starting with uh, the Python Paleor, uh, developed by Pascal Paleor in 1999, uh, it's a PHE or the Partial Homomorphic Encryption Scheme that allows you to do addition of two, a ciphertext, multiplication of a ciphertext and a plain text. And uh, this implementation is easily available on Python Paleo library. You can pip install and start using it. Uh, even though this is not the latest technology, but I would recommend anybody who's trying to get their hands on or homomorphic encryp encryption to start using uh, the Paleo library first to get a better understanding of how encryption works, how decryption works, and how they perform basic calculations. I will also like show a small demo of this in a bit once I cover all the libraries. Then comes PySeal. Uh, it was an active library when we were looking at it, but it, it soon turned into an archive. Uh, this also used uh, C++ in the background. It is a wrapper, but does not do any sort of justice to the original work. Uh, it's not at all easy to use and uh, lacks some kind of documentation to use it. And uh, even to build this particular library, you need to build it inside their repository. And there are tons of config files. And I'm sure you don't want to deal with that. So we decided to not move further with this uh, library. 
And then comes Pi FHE. It was developed a few years ago by some folks at MIT as a part of their thesis. Uh, it's an open, fully homomorphic encryption library, allows you to do all the schemes available like BFE, BGV, CKKS, and tons of operations like addition, multiplication, even subtraction, uh, relinearization, rescale, modulus, rotate, conjugate, multiply matrix, and whatnot. But uh, it soon ended, or when their school ended, because they stopped maintaining this uh, library right after their thesis got over, and they have uh, very little documentation left. So hence, we couldn't use this. And another uh, library we found was PyFHEL uh, or PyFEL. It implements functionalities of homomorphic encryption libraries. And uh, it allows you to do all, all sorts of calculations. And it's really good for machine learning demos as well. It's a great implementation. And uh, we also tried this out uh, as a part of proof of concept. And it's pretty good to use. Uh, but we also found a much better library than this while we were researching. It's called Tenseal. It's developed by Open Minded, and it allows you to perform any sort of operations on tensors as well. It's built on top of Microsoft Seal, so it preserves efficiency by implementing most of its operations using C++. It has excellent features enabling encryption and decryption of vectors of integers using the BFE and the CKKS schemes. It allows you to perform any sort of vector multiplication, um, dot product, or anything that you can think of using vectors. And coming from a data science uh, point of view, I think it's really important to deal with vectors. And something that allows you to do seamless calculations is the thing of the R. And uh, it also allows you to perform complex machine learning algorithms like logistic regression or CNN. And uh, we also did a proof of concept uh, using Tenseal. So without any further ado, I'm going to take you all to the demo. I'm going to just change my screen. Sorry. All right. Can you all see it fine? Perfect. So this is the home for all the code that we've put together so far. Uh, we've put together all the research in documentation, whatever we found so far with all the references and our uh, takeaways from that. We've put together that. You can like go check it out. Uh, besides that, uh, we did a lot of proof of concepts, tried one library at a time, and did basic Hello World uh, computations to see how they work, how easy it is to use for somebody who has no idea what homomorphic encryption is. So starting with uh, the Palier notebook, uh, as I said, this is like the easiest thing to start uh, getting an understanding of homomorphic encryption. Uh, it's just a pip install. And once you have two numbers, you can just quickly go encrypt them and try to add them. Uh, and that would simply give you the result. If you talk about the time taken to perform uh, this uh, calculation, so homomorphic addition took 92.8 microseconds, and the vector addition took 102 nanoseconds. Uh, so we can obviously see that uh, it was much faster to do the vector addition, and the homomorphic encryption uh, took a fair amount of time. Uh, it took um, 1,200 times extra time than the normal addition. So standing on my same point, like it is expensive and time-consuming to perform uh, encryption and perform operations on them at the same time. Uh, but this is back in the 90s, so we've come a long way from there, uh, which I'll come to later. And uh, when you try to do multiplication for two cipher numbers, it's not possible. Uh, so just giving context here to show how far we've come today, uh, that we're able to even do complex machine learning algorithms where we, when we started from here and we didn't have any sort of multiplication facilities either. So, we did seal, uh, pi seal, which is no longer available right now. Uh, it's complex to use, lacks documentation, so we are not 
uh, going to go over PySeal. Uh, then there's PyFell, uh, which, which is also pretty simple. You can like directly start using BFE scheme, encrypt your data using that. Uh, you can also create a key here and encrypt your data. And you can do integer array encoding, encryption. So it's pretty simple to use that. But I'm going to jump to Tenseal uh, because um, that, according to us, is one of the finest libraries available right now to perform any sort of operations. Uh, so starting with, uh, we convert our normal plain text to ciphertext and start doing addition, multiplication, subtraction on it. And we also try to see how long does it take. Okay, refresh it. Cool. So um, the time taken to perform addition here is 14.59 uh, times faster than the homomorphic addition, whereas it used to take 1,200 times more to perform it using the Paleo crypto system. So it's definitely much, much faster now and uh, also a lot easier to use with all the research backing, research papers, and lots and lots of open source tools uh, to explore. So that makes things easier. And there's a lot of work, active work going on in the field of homomorphic encryption. Uh, there's also subtraction uh, facility, which wasn't there for the longest time. And now we can also perform subtraction, but it's al also uh, much slower. Uh, there's also multiplication that you can perform on your data. And then uh, using the CKKS scheme, you can also perform more uh, operations like addition, subtraction, negation, uh, power, exponentials, dot product, uh, and matrix multiplication. However, more complex the operation gets, longer it takes, and the more memory it takes in your backend. So, for example, matrix multiplication, the vector one is 3,600 times faster than the homomorphic matrix multiplication. So that's how complex it gets as you increase the intensity of the operation. So now I'll give you a quick overview of uh, the proof of concept that we performed using Tenseal. Uh, it's a logistic regression. Uh, it got a data set from Kegel. It's a heart disease data set making predictions on uh, the risk associated with the heart diseases. And uh, I tried to just put together a basic logistic regression model. So literally five lines of code, uh, assigned a classifier here, and tried to make a prediction. And I got some results. It's super easy to do logistic regression when it comes to plain data. But when it comes to doing encryption, like I tried to first move towards a PyTorch model uh, and try to pre-process this data. Uh, try to see what the shape of the data looks like to ensure that everything is in place, and then uh, train a logistic regression model here. And after that, I also try to do an encrypted evaluation on this data. So I took the plain parameters to train the data, but just that the evaluation was performed on an encrypted data set to see how long does it take to do that and what accuracy we get it. Um, so that also performed pretty well. Um, I'm trying to see where that accuracy lies. So yeah, so the difference between the plain and the encrypted accuracy was 0.27, which is not too bad. Uh, I think given like you don't see the new data, it's slightly difficult to make uh, a prediction on that and still seems okay. But then uh, I also tried to train an encrypted logistic regression model on encrypted data. So like starting from an encrypted data set, it takes a lot of time to train. Uh, because your model is not aware of the exact values, and you also take time to encrypt the values, then feed it, uh, feed it inside the model. So uh, I will quickly go towards the end. Uh, so I did try to see how long does it take. So I did a lot of hit and trial uh, parameter tuning, and like to find out uh, what's the best suited uh, sweet spot after which my uh, kernel doesn't break. Uh, so I was able to find that like after three epochs, uh, I was able to get a decent enough model, uh, and it was making good predictions. And to my surprise, we got a better accuracy when uh, we trained on an encrypted data set. So um, that was like a win, but uh, could be a flake. I, I don't, don't quote me on that. But uh, just particularly for this data set, we got a better accuracy when trained 
on uh, the encrypted data set and we were easily able to make predictions by even though we had encrypted data and encrypted evaluations, it was working absolutely fine. So it's a foolproof technique uh, that you can use and still ensure your data privacy at the same time. So that's all about the demo. Uh, so homomorphic uh, encryption versus federated learning. I'm sure uh, this question uh, must be in your heads uh, because a lot of folks are working on federated learning as well. Uh, so I will take a quick minute to tell you how these are similar or dissimilar from each other. So even though both these projects uh, have a similar concern, they wanted to ensure that there's security, privacy, and allows you to do uh, uh, work in a collaborative environment, yet ensuring your privacy, uh, homomorphic encryption and federated learning are different in the aspects of um, what thing is getting encrypted here. So when it comes to HE, uh, the computations are performed on encrypted data, whereas uh, the federated learning allows you to train the machine learning models on decentralized devices. Uh, so what it does it, like I will give you my model uh, in an encrypted format or in a secure location where you can access it so that I never get to see your data set. However, homomorphic encryption involves you to send me your data in an encrypted format, and I send you back a prediction which is also encrypted that you get to only decrypt. So HEA is obviously more complex uh, due to encryption and decryption that is involved uh, that you have to do before sending it to the model, whereas uh, federated learning does not require you to uh, do any sort of encryption or decryption because you get the model and uh, you can just like throw in your data right away. But that's the difference. Like the main problem here is that HE, in my opinion, is more privacy focused, which is, I think, like an important concern. Uh, however, uh, federated learning is distributed data across many devices. So coming back to why we are doing this since uh, a lot of websites are collecting our data. We definitely don't want them to also see our data and anonymize it and then make predictions. So in my opinion, homomorphic encryption is the way to go because even, then, uh, even when you're using homomorphic encryption, you don't get to see the data and still make predictions. Whereas in federated learning, you are just technically importing uh, a model and then sending your unanonymized data, and that would be a privacy concern in my opinion, so that's not the way to go uh, when it comes to somebody's private data. Well, uh, similar to this is confidential computing as well, uh, whereas homomorphic encryption does not require any specialized, uh, specialized hardware. Uh, see, uh, confidential computing, on the other hand, uh, works with a lot of hardware. Uh, it requires you to have a whole setup where you put together a confidential computing setup and store your data, making sure nobody gets to see it. Uh, even though the concern is nice, uh, it allows you to ensure the privacy of your data. It comes with a heavy cost of maintaining hardware, not only by the purchasing cost, but also the storing cost. It requires hefty uh, places to store uh, such um, uh, hardware. And uh, that's it, uh, I think. Um, I think I've convinced you guys to use homomorphic encryption uh, on your data sets. Uh, so please let me know if you all have any questions. I'm happy to take them. Just a quick question again. Mm -hmm. I'm a newbie to encryption and, and things like that. So okay. the question is, does uh, homomorphic, homomorphic algorithm support uh, logical operators, such as can I compare to encrypted values and determine if they're greater, equals, or? Yeah, there or is um, still a bit of a situation on that front. Uh, you cannot compare two values. I, I think I did list them in the set of disadvantages because you cannot compare uh, which two values, uh, one of them is which one's bigger, basically. So I think that's one of the biggest limitations when it comes to homomorphic encryption. Thank you. Quick question, what is the impact on model performance? Model performance as 
according to like the small response proof of response time and stuff like that. Yeah, response time is much 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 higher. Um, it takes pretty long to uh, do a simple logistic regression. I think I'm going to share the time that it took. So average time per epoch was 350 seconds when trained on three epochs. Uh, however, when you try to do a basic classifier, a logistic regression model, it takes like barely a second. It's just when you run the cell, it gives you an output. So uh, this is also a very small data set that I used here. It was, I think, 4,000 rows. Uh, and still, it took that long. Uh, to perform, so it does come at a cost. But um, we are also trying to work on distributing uh, our algorithms in a way and making sure that the computation happens faster. And we are also working with some sort of hardware research teams uh, to see if it's possible to accelerate our uh, time taken to perform homomorphic operations. But as of now, uh, this is like uh, the beginning of the research here, so it takes a lot of time to do any sort of calculations. Thank you. Um, embarrassing to myself, you will find I really didn't understand most of it from my question. Uh, in that example of logistic regression, could you explain as a model owner what part is known to that party? Say, mm -hmm. in the unencrypted data, we know age and all that information. So as a model owner, what do I know? And when I provide the prediction, what do I know that I'm predicting to? Am I making sense? Like, do yeah. I know what properties are there? Or do I just don't know if age is like 1 million and this decrypts to 35? And what is that encryption? Yeah. So I think um, might be wrong here, but uh, what your model knows here is the type of data that you're receiving and some sort of sample data uh, to get a better understanding of how the data looks like. So if this is the heart disease data set, whatever columns that were present was aware to the model because column names are not encrypted here. Uh, but when it comes to predictions, I might not be sure how the model is getting to understand it uh, and what it takes to get uh, better understanding of the data. As far as I know, it knows uh, the column names and uh, just few numbers inside that, but uh, I'm really not sure how it works on the back end and how model understands everything. But that was a really good question, thank you. All right, then thank you. Thank you everyone for joining.